thank you also for the invitation for giving me today the possibility to speak a little bit a little bit about uh, another component of the of the diet i'm focused mainly my activities on energy and amino acids and especially uh, in order to implement precision feeding so now we'll investigate other components of uh, other diet uh, I will organize my talk uh, first by some uh, basic of the regulation of uh, the acid ba balance in the, in the pig. Well, I, I'm not a physiologist, I'm a nutritionist. Then I will, I will use my nutritionist eyes to investigate this, uh, this topic. Uh, then after this uh, basic, I will present the context. Why do we focus on this uh, criteria and then we will uh, see what are the available results on this criteria in the literature during the post-winning period, during the growing fattening period, and also on sows. So probably you will see the only slides I have on post-winning uh, piglets. <laughs> so uh, on this table, you can see that uh, one of the main criteria that uh, helps to the, the animal to, to regulate is uh, homeostasis uh, status, is a pH. And this criteria is very, very strongly regulated by, by a lot of different mechanisms that help to buffer the system. And we, we, the, the animals have to buffer the system because we, uh, when we feed them, in fact, it corresponds to an acid load due to the utilization of carbohydrates. And this acid load can be easily uh, checked because uh, we can uh, measure pH below 7 in uh, the urine. Uh, animals, especially pigs, and especially uh, also lactating sows, have to face extra uh, heat exposure. And in such situation, one of the adaptation they they use to regulate their body temperature is an increase of the ventilation rate. And doing that, there is a loss of um, carbon dioxide, and that is then there is a risk of uh, respiratory alkalosis. Then this is a major risk for the the sow during lactation. Then an effect on the a potential effect on the pH or an activation of the buffer systems at least. For the growing animals, there are different things that can happen, either vomiting, but it's rather seldom in pigs, more a risk of diarrhea. Yeah, we, sp we spoke ab uh, a lot of about this problem. And in this case, we it can lead to uh, an acidosis. And then the, the growing pigs, the young pigs, is uh, exposed to this uh, risk b due to the uh, accumulation of H plus uh, in, the, in, the, in the body. That is a context for about the acid base status of, of the pig, particularity of the pigs. Now, what, what, what is the problem, brief description about the problem of uh, potential risk of uh, decreased pH in the body? It will have some inf influence on the enzymatic activities. The structure will be changed and the efficiency will be reduced. It will also cause some aggression. So the, the on the on the skin you can see some effects on the on, on the on the animal also on the, on the digestive tract. I will present you what the result of one study that investigated the effect uh, of acidity on the stomach ulcer. Also, a risk of uh, of uh, mobilization or resorption of minerals in the in the in the bones. And also consequences on the immune system, also on the nervous system. Then we can see that almost all the major functions of the animal uh, are susceptible to be uh, impaired by any, a small change in pH. Well, just some brief info, uh, information. We will inter be interested by some electrolytes today. And um, we will focus mainly on the sodium and potassium. And when there is a absorption of these electrolytes in the, in the blood, it contributes to in, an increased pH. And in contrast, when we consider chlorus, chlorine, uh, it will help to decrease uh, pH. Okay. Then, what, we, what do we consider as dietary electrolytes? Uh, there are, so of course, cation, anion. Well, in fact, in pigs, we focus mainly on sodium, potassium, and chlorine sometimes uh, sulfates and then as you will have a copy of the slide you, I just remind you the, 
the way to calculate a dietary cationion difference. But we do not use uh, so much this criteria. We mainly use the uh, dietary electrolyte balance, just focusing on sodium, potassium, and chlorine. Um, just to mention that uh, when you, you want to, to check the, the, the dietary concentration, just be careful because sometimes this electrolyte is rather difficult to, to, to obtain in the laboratory. Well, what is the context when we consider this criteria in formulation or, or not? The first thing we have to consider is that formulation over the years, during the year, is not like a quiet river. We have to face sudden changes in feed price that contributes to change the, f the price of interest of feedstuff in uh, our diets. And for example, I focus here on the, uh, the wheat price and the soybean meal price over uh, 20 years. You can see sudden changes. So it's the price that we have to pay when uh, the feedstuff arrived uh, in Brittany, in France. And you can see a very huge increase, uh, for example, in 2012. And in such cases, we have to decide, do we have to continue to incorporate so soybean or can we reduce it? And what are the consequences in the comp composition of the diet, even if we maintain the net energy values, the, the amino acid value, etc. We'll see that there are some difference. So we have to face these changes in fits of price. We have also to, to, to consider the constraint with the s demand of the society, especially for a reduced impact of the pig production on the environment. And if you consider that fattening pigs, for example, contribute in you know, fattening, um, uh, farrowing fattening unit to 70% uh, of the feed intake, and then you, see, you can see that more than 60% of the uh, outputs, nitrogen, phosphorus, gas emission, etc. We can see that we have to uh, make a lot of effort to reduce the environmental input through the a better uh, weight, a better better diets uh, formulated for, for for pigs. And for example, here you can see that if we ch we switch from a two phase feeding strategy to multi phase feeding strategy using low CP diets, low crude protein diets, it helps to reduce with a very large. Um, it, it has a very l big impact on the um, outputs, especially nitrogen, for example, more around twenty percent. Then this uh, this motivate this is a motivation to switch from standard diet, diets we have used for decades, to new formula. And in this case, if we, ch we ch change from a regular soybean, corn soybean diet to a very different one, probably there are other components in the diet to consider. Uh, presently, in we do not focus only on the reduction of uh, crude protein in the diet to reduce nitrogen impact. We also uh, try to f provide to each animal each day the right amount of nutrients it uh, requires. And this is why I mentioned uh, in the introduction also the fact that uh, we focus a lot of effort on the precision feeding of, uh, of animals. And both the price of the feedstuff, the co environmental constraints and the, the, the fact that we want to improve the efficiency of the, the resource utilization contribute to a reduction of the incorporation rate of proteins rich sources, which is allowed by the fact that we can use synthetic amino acid to maintain the, the essential amino acid in, in the diet. Well, let's consider now the, the electrolyte concentration of the feedstuff. What appears here, the so you have sodium, potassium, chlorine, and the calculated dietary electrolyte balance in the end, the last row. And what you, you see is that protein sources that we want to reduce in our diets are in fact the, the feedstuff that are very uh, that present a very high electrolyte balance compared to uh, to grains or other other feedstuff. So if we represent the, 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 the figure in a different way, you can, you can find again the, the meals here, very l high level of crude protein and also 
supply of uh, a level of uh, electrolyte balance that is higher. Amino acids, well, it depends if you consider the lysine supplied as a powder with a supply of, of chlorine or liquid lysine, but otherwise uh, the they do not bring so many electrolytes. So it means that if you reduce the, the protein-rich sources and you, you balance your diet with synthetic amino acids, then you will reduce the uh, dietary electrolyte balance. So I've made some some formula here uh, where, in fact, I, I try to reduce the crude protein level of my diets either during the growing fin phase or the finishing phase. And um, I try to, to reduce uh, the crude protein level but with a, with a minimum value of the dietary electrolyte balance in my uh, in my in the basis of uh, my constraints of formulation, and you can see that depending on well, it's, uh, it was perform, uh, calculations performed a few years ago, but you can see that if I um, I try to reduce from uh, six sixteen point five percent of protein the and I remove this minimum value, I'm not able to decrease the protein content below 16.2 because of the constraint I put uh, on the dietary uh, balance, electrolytic balance. But if I can use something, a fit of here for example sodium bicarbonate to balance this criteria, I'm able to reduce to, to, to reduce more the, the incorporation rate of soybean meal in my diet to meet the expectation of uh, what I expect as a minimum value of the electrolyte balance and in this case it helps to reduce the crude protein content to an even lower level and it's the same during the finishing phase. It means that if we have, if we, I add not this minimum value of uh, B e EB here, I would have get a lower BE and maybe it can be a problematic, we will see uh, later on. So it is a way to see what do I have to, to, to balance this criteria b by which extra feedstuff I didn't use before or not. So let's move now to some results that are available in the literature on the effect of uh, electrolyte balance. First, po during the post-winning period. Uh, in most cases, at this time, animals are fed at libitum. And finally, um, in fact, the, the, the effect on feed conversion ratio can be different from one study to another. And in most cases, we consider that uh, the, f the f effect we see on average gain is very connected with what we see on the uh, feed intake. So on this slide, I have collected uh, many studies. Some of them are more recent than others, but you can see that um, it w they were performed more in the 90s and in the beginning of the century. And uh, there I have put in uh, on this, I've expressed a result due to difference between studies. Um, the result based on uh, with the highest ADG obtained within each t study uh, and comparison depending on the level of the dietary electrolyte balance. And up oh, there's something that is uh, too too light, but finally there is uh, some colors here. Uh, and finally, when we consider all these studies, well, at this time I do not dare to call it a meta-analysis, but the the, the sp sp spirit is there. We can consider that over this range between 100 and 275, we get the the best uh, ADG average uh, daily gain uh, on average. If we swi switch now to the growing finishing period, we can make the same uh, uh, exploration of the literature with uh, pretty older studies. And this time we can see that the um, optimal uh, range would be uh, around this. Well, it means from 175 to 300. You can see that uh, as a matter of fact, we have we are we can work over very large uh, ranges of value um, due to the, the number of different buffer systems that are that, that help the, the pig to, to, to regulate its uh, acid base status. Well, 
One study that uh, was available in addition to the uh, uh, previous one in, uh, in Italy focused on the, the effect of uh, the electrode balance on the Caracas Linus. It was performed at, uh, in Ra Saint-Gilles. Uh, and uh, finally, th there was a significant uh, effect of this criteria, uh, but, but the difference was mainly due to the um, too low electrolyte balance. Bef you can see that on at this level, 114 seems to penalize the, the, the lean content of, of uh, the animals. Another criteria was the digestibility of the other components of the, the diet, where uh, Aiden and West in indicated that when you uh, decrease at too low levels uh, the electrolyte balance, then you, you start to impair the digestibility here of amino acids, but also you can see that at this point uh, digestibility of energy was also impaired. So it means that there are some uh, changes in the in the gut also that uh, can start to, to modify what the animal is able to do with the nutrients that are supplied. Those consequence was rather a, a big change in, in nitrogen retention. Well, there was a, some question this morning about the technology applied to the, uh, to, to the diet and how it is supplied to the animal. I found one study one American one, on the, the presentation of the diet, do we have to use mash or do we have to use some pellets? It means that, it means that can, uh, there is also a, a, a confusion then with the way it, we can use them because mash will, in most cases, will be used in a, in a liquid feeding system uh, compared to pellets that, can, uh, that are used in a dry system. Um, well, in fact, you can see that it's not so easy to make uh, any difference, but probably uh, I think that it was just, I think it's, it's the same also from uh, for drip losses. Uh, stomach are sometimes difficult when you want to stu to study uh, stomach ulcers. Sometimes it's difficult to have some, and uh, th then the criteria is not so easy to 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 work. But what what uh, the, the, this uh, study indicated that uh, when th there was a, almost a tendency here is that uh, with um, even with with uh, feedstuff that were ground uh, not so finely, uh, rather coarse, there was a, a, a lower percentage of safe stomachs than more ulcer when the the electrolyte balance was too low. Well, was low. Then which was it was concluded that due to this problem, it was probably too low. But uh, on this, in this uh, study, it was not possible to s find any significant difference. But you can see that, well, the, the 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 minimum value was a little bit higher than this one. The probably the range was not uh, was not uh, uh, low enough to to demonstrate this effect. But you can see that here there was a. More, more pigs that were safe, but no extra data uh, were uh, obtained or published to indicate that uh, increasing the statistical power of the study, the result would have been uh, significant or not. Well, so during the, the growing f uh, phase, based on the different uh, criteria that can be investigated, we can probably conclude that uh, the range of the value uh, would be from 175 and 300. Uh, in most cases, presently, our formula spontaneously uh, will um, adjust around 200, then more during the, 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 the below, uh, the lowest value of, of, the, of the range. Okay. Well, now I will uh, switch to the, to the sow especially during the late gestation and during l lactation. Well, a uh, few years ago, an American study indicated that maybe we can take advantage of what has the work that has been done on dairy cows in order to improve the situation of our uh, sows at farming, especially with in the context of a very high polyficacy. Uh, it means that... Um, in order, the problem now, of course, is a problem of low survival of our piglets. It's a, it's a welfare issue that we have to solve, and also, of course, an economic issue. And they indicate that probably we can have different way to think about the problem, either 
a s the sanitary one or a physiological one. That means that if we manage to, s to reduce a little bit the blood pH, assuming that it is possible without any pain or problems for the animal, or at least if we, we stimulate some buffer system, we can then reduce your urinary pH, and then the, the sanitary pressure due to the, 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 the health of the sow, and then the infectious pressure on the piglets at birth. The other, the other way to think uh, about the problem and to try to, to, to stimulate uh, the survival rate through a different electrolyte balance of the, of the, in the, the gestation or late gestation diet would be to, to modify the mineral metabolism, especially the calcemia that is also involved in a, as a kind of, a, of buffer system, carbonate, um, calcium carbonate. And in fact, if we modify this balance, maybe if we can stimulate the absorption of calcium or the calcium release in the blood, it can help to uh, stimulate the uterine muscle contraction. And in dairy cows, it is a way to uh, prevent the milk fever of the cell. Well, I will not go further because it's not my, my topic there, but you can see we can try to, to, to find, to, to, to use experience of from other spe species. Well, so another way to think, so it was a way to, 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 to investigate the topic through the sow. What are the consequences of what happens during the, 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 the farrowing for the piglets? Is that if the farrowing process is not good, it's too long, we spoke yesterday, we saw some interesting results about uh, uh, wh what can determine the duration of the farrowing. Well, if, if we have a, a, a too long farrowing, then we can have a bad vitality score due to also what happens in the piglets with what is, what, I what happens on the pH due to gas exchanges, asphyxia, hypoxia, etc. So we can see that also, electrolytes can be uh, in involved in, uh, in the fetus before the, the birth. Well, then, a recent, uh, a recent trial that are collected, uh, so in December, so you can see that some people are still working on this criteria, focus not, not exactly on the, on the electrolyte balance, but it was uh, more on the dietary cation anion difference, but I convert it in an in, in electrolyte balance so you can have the figure. And you can see that ranging a criteria ranging from 25 to well more than 125 was associated with very huge difference in the pH in urine but a very very stable pH in the blood so it illustrates how strong are the buffer system involved in the regulation because survival finally of the animal depends on this ability to regulate the value of the pH I presented at the introduction uh, around uh, 7.4. So you can see here that the pH is much more lower, reduced with low BE. What is interesting to, to see is the consequences on the minerals of the cell. And especially, the, so there are a lot of results you can see, you, know, you can find this, uh, this paper in, in, uh, easily. Uh, but one result was that was very interesting was the consequence on calcium because I spoke before about uh, the hypothesis bet between calcium release etc and uh, and uh, muscle contraction during thawing. What we see is that when the BE is reduced, we find more calcium in urine, a little bit more also in feces, that means that there is a reduced digest digestion, digestibility of the, of the calcium. And so we, we, we find more calcium in the urine, but when we check the value of the calcium in the blood, it's still very strongly regulated also, like pH. But with the different diets that have been supplied to the sow, the, the calcium in intake was similar. And then it means that if the sow excreted more calcium in urine and regulate the calcium in the blood, there was calcium coming from elsewhere. Where do does it come? Fr of course, from the bones. So it, 
it is a, a way to uh, illustrate the calcium resorption from the skeleton. Then it means that if we we would like to reduce the electrolyte balance for some good reason, for example, firing process, we have to be very we have to be very careful not to use such kind of diets for over too long periods because it has some uh, very important consequences on the bones quality of the cell. And in some cases we can, I it happens in the past that in some uh, herds that received uh, uh, very acidogenic diets had a lot of problems of uh, uh, broken legs, etc. So we have to be, to be careful, but how long can we use such kind of, of diet? So this was a, a, a recent study. Well, the, the, the link with uh, the survival rate and the electrolyte balance is illustrated in, in this slide well, with three studies. The first one in uh, 2003 by De Rocher it was a very interesting one because it indicated that compared to uh, an electrolyte balance of uh, one around 100, moving switching to around zero was more interesting because it improved significantly the survival rate of piglets, then it was uh, calculated around 10 days of age. But more recent uh, publications, so obtained by uh, Cheng's team and uh, Boudon team, uh, so the last one is at INRA, we can see that finally in these studies it was not possible to uh, demonstrate a significant uh, imp improvement of survival. Well, just to mention, uh, the first studies were obtained with a very a small litter size compared to th the one uh, calculate, uh, obtained by Boudon uh, at INRA. Then what happens? Probably uh, the, 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 the way, the, way uh, the, the, the range maybe was uh, involved, mm, I'm not sure. I'm more convinced you, can s you, you saw before the consequence of the electrolyte balance on the calcium metabolism. Uh, probably there are also some interactions with the phosphorus status of the cell because when you when you check the, 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 the other components of the diet, you can see that uh, the diet used by the Rocher was much more uh, high in phosphorus compared to the diets we use presently. And it is, is, is it, pos it, it is possible that there are some, some connection between uh, both uh, components. But presently there is no, uh, I didn't find any any uh, papers on any trials uh, that demonstrate it. It's pure speculation uh, presently. So some, uh, some other criteria that can be influenced by different electrolyte balance during the late gestation or during uh, also the beginning of the, of the lactation. Here just uh, uh, one line that was significantly improved uh, or changed by the, 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 the treatment. It was the immunoglobulins, G, and then it was concluded that probably using a low uh, EB, in addition to a potential effect on the firing process, can also improve the immuno, uh, immunology, protection, passive protection of the piglets through the colostrum quality. So probably uh, it's always the same. If you have uh, no no b no high sanitary pressure, you will not see anything. But if you have uh, some uh, some problems in the health, maybe it can be a, a solution to investigate. Uh, some uh, performance during the lactation. So here on in this slide, you can see a comparison between uh, two uh, treatments with with uh, electrolyte balance around 175 percent and uh, 100 milli equivalent per kilo more. And in this case, uh, it was demonstrated that at winning around three weeks of age, there was a tendency to a higher uh, milk production with the the highest uh, electrolyte balance. But Finally, uh, other criteria were not influenced over this range of value. As you can see, feed intake of the sow was not significantly different. Well, the tendency was good to, to for the, 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 the highest level of uh, EB, but uh, not significantly, and body weight and back that thickness uh, were, were not changed either. Uh, it's always the same. Do we have the, sa the, the, uh, the stat high statistical um, power or, or, or not to demonstrate this, this uh, that there is a difference or not? But finally, the, the figures are in agreement with, with what c could be expected 
through a, a better digestibility of nutrients with a higher EB. Another study, but, um, more, more recent, but in this case, uh, it was not possible to demonstrate uh, uh, a difference between uh, the, um, the weight at winning uh, of piglets, but you can see for sows that uh, were completely different, they hit more and mobilized less. So do we have to make some connections between this uh, condition? Yeah, probably, but uh, we have to investigate that. Well, but here on in another study, so always the same criteria. This time you can see that uh, com com comparing a very uh, low electrolyte balance, in this case, uh, always the same value of electrolyte balance was uh, it gave more interesting results in milk production because piglets were a little bit heavier at at weaning compared to low low balance. So finally, it will, it will even if results are not systematically consistent from one study to another, it helps to 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 make one's mind uh, in the end. And what I want to 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 explain is that probably we with dealing with this criteria is we have to to accept to be less precise and as than when we consider amino acids uh, or uh, energy. Uh, an, uh, a trial we, we, we carried out when we, I was focusing on the effect of hot temperature on uh, lactating, so was that at this time, um, when I started as a study at INRA on uh, this criteria, in this condition, in fact, I, I, at first I, I reduced the crude protein level in the lactation diets uh, with the aim to reduce the thermal effect of the feed and the hot exposure. And we were rather mm, disappointed because we didn't have the, the results we expected with these diets. And then we wanted to to check, well, was was there something wrong in the diet that we formulated or, or not? And yes, perhaps because at this time I didn't consider the electrolyte balance. Then I decided to, 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 to perform this, uh, this new trial at IFIP, and uh, I use my control diet like uh, as usual with uh, crude protein content around 16.6%, uh, and then I use my two low crude protein diets either with um, a reduced uh, DEB because without any constraint in formulation, or a DEB that was expected to be the same like in the control room, but when we measure the concentration of the electrolytes, finally we didn't found the chlorine in the diet at the expected level. That's why here the, the value is, is different, but it was expected to be around 180. And finally, we didn't find any, an, in, any advantage or any difference when we use uh, when we let the, the, the EB change over this range, but it's ra rather narrow range. And finally, well, based on these results, we can say that uh, the results we obtained before uh, was not due to uh, the fact that EB was not taken into account in the previous uh, studies on, on hot exposure of sow. But then it can mean that it indicates that we can reach lower values uh, of EB during the lactation than probably during the gestation. Then, Based on the, com on the addition of all the criteria obtained, collected in the available studies, what we see is that probably during the late gestation, we can expect good results of using a, low, uh, a lower uh, electrolyte balance during late, late gestation, but I insist on the fact that these diets can have to be used over a short period of time. A few years ago, it was not even possible to imagine that uh, farmers could use a different diet during the last week of gestation. Presently, with uh, the challenge uh, uh, that hyperprolificacy arises, now it, some farmers are using a different diet during late gestation. They increase the level of amino acids, they modify the fibers, they modify the energy level. Then why not the electrolyte balance over this period of, of time. And during lactation, then probably the the EB has to be a little bit higher, but 
without with, with, with some uncertainties due to results that are can be inconsistent from one study to another. Then, if we consider all the, um, these results, uh, I'm convinced that we have to take this criteria into account in formulation. And this is presently done in routine when we carry out our our studies, experimental studies. We check because now we do not longer use a very stable diets of other time, so we have to take this into account, and we can suggest some recommendation during each period of the peak production so that we can uh, ac we can expect to reach the values indicated on the uh, on the slide here and some um, some field studies in fact indicate that probably we have to to make a um, uh, dynamic in the way we, we consider this criteria, that is, I like it is a case for uh, other components of the diet, and that probably the, the gestation li diet uh, has to be a little bit with a higher DUB than the lactation diet. That's, that's why I, I put this value here and I insist that in fact if you use a diet that it would, could be uh, formulated around 220 milli equivalent, then switch during the lactation to the one here. It's not you do not have to 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 cross in this direction or this direction just to be consistent. Uh, if you use a, a, a value that is a, a, a low one within the range of during just like gestation, just be consistent during the lactation. And that I think it's the time now. It's time for your question. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. And there's a few questions as well. And the first one is, uh, is there any difference between the use of sodium bicarbonate or sodium sulfate for the DAB in pig diets? Well, I think I, I indicated that sulfate can also be considered as a as a component of the acid-base status of the uh, of the animal, so it depends, I think, on the on the sh on the the way or the 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 diets are are, are formulated with extreme values of uh, sulfur or not. Presently, I think the problem is not so acute like in uh, in the dairy cows, for example, but uh, probably a little bit, yeah. Okay, but Thank it's you. it will be less. It will be it can have a, an impact compared to, of course, uh, sodium. Bicarbonate because bicarbonates are not considered like uh, like an electrolyte per se. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And the next question is: uh, by by increasing the DAB, we are supposed to increase the blood pH. pH. Uh, does the intestinal pH will it be reduced because of the anion cation exchange? Yeah. Exchange. W when we increase uh, the EB, w w we do not. There is not a a tight relationship between the, the blood pH and the, the EB because there are numerous buffer systems that are involved in pH regulation. What we what we do doing that is that we we stimulate we, we yeah it's not stimulate it's not the right word but uh, we 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 make the system to contribute more to the regulation than uh, when we use a, uh, an average uh, balance. And then, considering the um, the lumina in the in the di digestive tract, well, there are some s some regulation in in, on in absorption of uh, sodium, chlorine, and potassium ba based on what happens in the blood. So they can they can uh, th the absorption of electrolytes can be modified due to what happens in the lumina, and then if the pH is modified or so, it can have some interactions with other nutrients, especially minerals and uh, calcium, etc. Yes. But for, for me, I think, well, I energy and amino acids w were enough for me, for, for, for my the beginning of my career as a nutritionist. And more recently, uh, I, I, I was forced to investigate minerals. <laughs> with and. Uh, well, it's 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 a completely uh, interesting topic that we I that has been um, that has been um, probably underestimated for for a while because maybe I, I speak about souls because s studies on souls take so long and we require so 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 effort 
but uh, presently with high power efficacy, we have to, to, to concentrate more uh, on this criteria again. again. Uh, and there are some teams in, in ERA that uh, are doing the, the job, yes. Yes, yeah. okay. And the next question is, how many days does it take uh, to change the pH of the urine by uh, reducing the DAP? Huh. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, <laughs> mm, I would say that it, w it can be very rapid, but uh, because it's re very reactive, if there is a, an acid load in the uh, 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 in the body, the, the animal reacts very very rapidly. But I'm not able to say to answer is if it's five hours or it's no. two days. Well, I uh, prefer to limit my my answer. Yeah, yeah, it's rapid, very rea re very reactive uh, reaction. Okay. Mm. Yes. And the last question is, what does the DB say when uh, sulfur uh, content is changed but not used in the DB, like when the methane and cysteine uh, content is changed? Uh, well, uh, I, I think that we have to meet to calculate <laughs> the DB in, in, the, in the, the extra load of methionine that was that was supplied to the animal at the end of, uh <laughs> of the, the fattening period. I think, yeah, it, it will probably have some some consequences. Uh, but uh, uh, well, if if we go far from the regular levels we use, we, we have to consider it. Yeah, and then we switch to. Uh, to the dietary cation difference, and we can see that the values are completely not the same, uh, the range of values. So we, we have to define what is the criteria, but I think that if we, we charge the sul in sulfur the diet, com it means that we have to take it, it into account, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>